In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at creating the film flash transition effect that's become very popular lately in Premiere Pro 2.0. So I've gone ahead and opened up a new project that's exactly the same except all of the effects that I used to create the film flash transitions have been removed from my clips. I'm going to go over to my effects panel and expand the video effects folder and then expand the blur and sharpen folder and select the effect fast blur. I'm going to left hand mouse click it and holding the left hand mouse button down I'm going to drag and drop it onto my first clip. So now we can see that in the effects control panel that along with the default effects of motion and opacity a new effect has been added called fast blur. The next effect I'm going to add is from my adjust folder so I'm going to expand that and select the effect levels. Left hand mouse click, hold, drag and drop. Okay, let's go to the end of our clip and take a note of where this clip ends in time. So it ends at 7 seconds and 1 frame. I want to go back about 15 frames. So I'll just type in 616 to go back 15 frames. And I'm going to expand the parameters for fast blur and for levels. I'm going to click the stopwatch for blurriness so that the default value of 0 is maintained at this point. So in other words, this far into the clip we have no blur. I'm also going to click repeat edge pixels so that when I do add blur it will expand right to the edge of my viewable window. Next I'm going to click the stopwatch for the levels parameter white input level so let's just take a look there you can see the name of it. So even though we have all these different parameters that we can change for the levels effect. Fortunately, we're only going to be working with just one of them, which is the white input level, and we want to again set the default value. So the idea is that we're placing what you might call hold keyframes to prevent any change up until this point. Now we just want to go, let's say, uh, four frames forward. So one, two, three, four. I'm going to add a little bit of blur. So maybe about 17. I'm going to take the repeat edge pixels off just so you can see what happens. You see this black rim that you start getting around the edges of your frame? We don't want that and that's what happens when you don't have repeat edge pixels on. So we'll put that back on. You can see that it's cleaned up now. And also we're going to reduce the white input level, the RGB white input level so that we get kind of a hot looking image. Okay, great. Now let's go three frames forward, one, two, three, and we'll reduce the blurriness down, but not all the way, so maybe to about seven, and we'll bring the white levels back up, but not all the way back to their original value, so it still looks sort of hot. There we go, and now we'll go right to the end of our clip, and then cursor one frame back so that you can actually see the last frame of your clip, and we're going to increase the blurriness to a very large value, so somewhere around 38 or 39 would probably work well. And we're also going to decrease the white input level to really pump up the white in the image. Get this kind of really blown out, distorted effect. Now, particularly with the white input level adjustment, you're going to want to set it by eye because every clip that you have is going to be a little bit different. So uh, just go ahead and set it to your personal preference. Remember, we're not trying to make the screen completely white. We're just trying to blow it out enough so that it's really distorted and you can't really see what's going on. Okay, that looks good. So let's just go ahead and watch this transition. All right, looks great so far. We get that nice little pulse, which is what all these little extra keyframes were about that we set. So let's go ahead and select our second clip now and apply the same effects. So I'm going to apply the levels effect because it just happened to be there with my adjust folder still open. I'm going to select the fast blur effect and apply that. But I'll mention that the order in which these effects appear is important. It looks much better when you have the fast blur affecting the levels as opposed to the other way around. So I'm just going to drag my levels below fast blur. Let's expand the parameters for these two effects again, and this time we'll go to the beginning of our clip. We'll click our stopwatches for the two parameters that we're going to adjust. Now we're going to actually set the blur to its highest level, 
so it's right at the beginning of the clip. Repeat edge pixels. And also bring the white input level down so our whites are really brought out. Great, that looks good right about there. And we'll go, say, seven frames forward. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we'll set the default values back. So zero for blurriness and 255 for the levels effect. So now let's watch the whole transition. Perfect, exactly what we're looking for. So that might seem all well and good that we've created this film flash transition between these two first clips here. But what about when we want to create more transitions? For instance, we've got the transition between our second and third clip. Do we have to go back and do all that work over again? Well, no, there's a better way. I'm just going to go back to my first clip here and select it so all of the effects that are applied to it appear in the effects control panel. I'm going to select the first effect called Fast Blur. And then I'm going to click on the wing menu for the effects control panel and click on Save Preset. I'm going to call this fast blur out because this was the uh, fast blur that we set for the end of the clip and I'm going to select the option of anchor to out point. I'm going to do the same thing for levels so wing menu save preset and I'm going to call it levels out and anchor to out point I'm going to select my second clip and do exactly the same thing. This time I'll cheat a little bit and use the right hand mouse click on the effects to bring up save preset. And I'm going to call this fast blur in because we use this to transition into the clip and the same with levels. And anchor to in point of course being selected for this option. Now let's go to our effects panel and expand the presets folder and we can see that we have these four new custom effect presets called fast blur in, fast blur out, levels in, levels out. So this first transition is covered. We've got the film flash transition that's great. But on our next cut, we don't. It's just a straight cut. So for this clip, we want to have the fast blur out applied and the levels out applied. And since this clip is the clip that we're coming into, we'll do fast blur in and levels in. Now, when we play this back, we've instantly got a film flash transition created for these next two clips in this next cut. So by utilizing Premiere Pro's ability to save and recall custom effect presets, we can now apply the film flash transition very quickly to any clips that we want in our timeline sequence.